Okay. Is this is this going to work? Check, check. Finally, it sounds clear. All right. Oh, dude, I've been trying like all morning to get like this up and running. And um it's been running into problems. Like my mic kept cutting out. Yesterday the programs weren't working. Oh, it's rough. What am I doing? Got a viewer request from my YouTube channel. Oh, just tried recording this several times, so I'm just Oof, not excited to really record this again. <sighs> Let's try it. Let's see how this goes. I'm going to go for it. Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning into my channel. It's a special video today. Uh, not only because this is the first video that you're going to be seeing on YouTube with uh, that shows my face. Hello. This is what I look like. Uh but also because it's a viewer request. Um, one of my viewers had an issue with Adobe Dimensions and getting the glass to render correctly. So he sent me his files and we're gonna try and see if we can't help him out. Uh, so I got his folder right here. And this is his comment. He says his glass looks like metal. Any ideas? Well, I think I might have a few. So this is the files he sent me. So we're going to open up his dimensions file and just kind of see what, what he's experiencing. It's opening up. All right. So we got a bottle. Now, he mentioned to me this was a custom made. He built this in Illustrator. And, you know, everything looks pretty good right now. Not really noticing any problems yet. That looks fine, but he did mention it was when he goes to render it, it always looks like metal. So, let's see what the render view looks like. Hmm. That is not fantastic. What I'm doing right now is not a fix. Don't rely on this as a fix, but you can adjust. You know, I've realized you guys can't even see what I'm doing because my dumb face. Let me move way over here. I don't think uh, there's going to be much important stuff over there. So over here, over here, it's your index of refraction. And if you adjust this bar in Adobe Dimensions, um, y you know, you, you might be able to solve some of the problems you're having. But this is not a solution um, because you. this is roughly about... Yeah, this is bad. Anyways, so let's try and figure out what's going on. So we're just going to close this. Don't save. And he sent me his OBJ. So I'm going to open his OBJ up in one of the 3D programs that I use for my 3D flow. And the Pete, if you're following along, and I hope you are, I really insist you download this program. It's a free program. It's going to make your 3D workflow much better. Okay? So the program is called Blender. Again, it's it's a, not a big, it's a lightweight, right? I just clicked it, you saw how fast it opened up. I'm going to give you a crash course in this for what you need to know. But before I do that, let's just look at your file. This is just what Blender looks like. Just sort of take it all in for a second. Again, please go download this. Pause this video and go download Blender right now. I'll wait. Okay. Yeah, whatever. All right. So, I hope you have Blender. I hope you're opened up to your start scene as I am. We're just going to select the cube. It's, you're going to know it's selected because it's going to have a nice border around it, a nice yellow border. Okay. And we're going to hit the X key on your keyboard. That's going to bring up your delete menu. First step in Blender when you open it is to always delete the default cube. It's a little trade secret. Now we're going to import his OBJ. So we're going to come up here to File, scroll all the way down to Import, Wavefront OBJ. And mine was on my desktop in the bottle folder. And it's only showing this file that I'm able to pick, which is the OBJ that, I, that, I, that I'm going to open. 
and uh, I'm not seeing anything. I'm not seeing anything. Hmm. Oh. Whoa. He's a thick boy. That is a big model. Uh, this is unreasonably large. Um, you should never really have a bottle this big. This is uh, very strange. Again, I also, I don't think this is your fault. This is just because Adobe Dimensions, right, is the only like reasonably considered 3D program Adobe offers. Illustrator and Photoshop, they're not 3D programs. They're graphic design programs, all right? So like Photoshop is a photo program. You manipulate photos. Illustrator is a vector program. You create vectors. They're not 3D programs. Don't use them like they're 3D programs because you're going to run into issues. Get Blender, okay? So we're still just looking at his file, all right? I'm just going to just be zooming in with my scroll wheel. I'm going to come over here to click on this hand so I can grab and move my scene. And you know, nothing really looks too bad. I've got him selected. You can tell because it's got the orange line or that yellow orange, I guess. I don't really know. Um, let's go over here to our rendered view. Mm. You know, it's not looking great. Let's drop in a plane just so we have a bit of a scene. And it's still not looking, not really able to see much. Let's go to cycles. Maybe, oh, there. He was still far too big. All right, so let's zoom in. There we go. Now he's actually an appropriate size for uh, the scene in Blender. So let's you know, get a good look at what we're looking at. All right, so we're in rendered view. I'm going to put on a uh, glass shader. Hmm. Another issue with Adobe is uh, it creates these things, which are completely unnecessary and bad for 3D workflows. It is not good because you got to get rid of them every time. So let's just delete. Just get rid of those and just do a create new. I'm just gonna scroll down to transmission. And yeah, you know, that's actually looking metallic here too. Hmm. Let's look deeper. Select it, I'm gonna hit tab, so I can go in the edit mode and, oof. It's a lot of triangles where really no triangles are needed. Um, that's that's actually fine though, that, that shouldn't be causing any issues. Uh, so let's go into wireframe view. And we have way too much going on in here in this mesh. This mesh is uh, unnecessarily dense. I'm, um, well, there's like weird stuff going on in this mesh. I don't even know like how to really explain. You've got like one, two, three, you've got like almost four faces in a glass, which is not great. So I think this is where the crux of your issue is. And another problem with this is this is... I can't do anything with this. Like, I can't make this better just as it is. Like, it's not going to work. But I can show you the correct steps. And I think that's why you're here. Before I do that, i got to close my window because I'm getting really cold. So now, I'm going to show you the correct steps. So we're going to close Blender. We're going to not save. Now, you want to go to your Illustrator file. Now. I have an Illustrator file that I mocked up based on your design. Um, it's not perfect. I just kind of threw it together. I'd hope you would spend a little more time on your curves than I do. So open it in Illustrator. That's the Illustrator file That's where I built it in. So I imagine that at some point you had something like this. We just need half the bottle. Okay, just an outline. Um, actually, no. No outlines. All right, you just want the shape color or no shape color, because that doesn't matter. Just make sure you don't have any outlines, because that may or may not screw this up more. Just no outlines, just the shape. And so we're gonna go up here to File. I built this with a pen tool, in case you were wondering. Go to Export and Export As. We're gonna make sure that SVG is selected. And I'm gonna save it here in the bottle as Bottle SVG. Not change anything, and just click OK. And that's all we need for that. Now we're going to reopen Blender. So open a new instance of Blender. Click away. Step one, delete the default cube. All right, so now we just have a nice blank scene. So let's import our SVG file. You're going to go up to File, and you're going to go to Import. Scalable Vector Graphic, SVG. And you're going to go to the folder that you 
had it in. Mine's in bottle, so I'm picking this one. And nothing's really here because it's insanely small. So I've got it selected. I'm just going to zoom out to a appropriate, reasonable distance. With it selected, I'm going to click the S key, and I'm going to drag my cursor out until it scales up to, you know, a better size. But now it's flat, still. That's not what I want. So I'm going to hit the R key on my keyboard to rotate. Okay, and this lets me rotate it. But I want to rotate it on a specific axis. So I'm going to click the X key to rotate it on the X axis. And because I also want it specifically up at a perfect 90 degrees, and it's kind of impossible to just eyeball that, I'm going to press the buttons 9-0 for 90. 9-0. And that dictates a 90 degree rotation. Now I'm going to click my mouse, and that's going to set it in. Okay, so we are most of the way there. So now we just need to prep this to rotate it. So we got the shape and the outline, and that's like most of the work. With it selected now, you want to right-click on your mouse, and you want to go to Convert to Mesh. All right, now when we hit Tab, which brings us into Edit Mode, there's also another way to do it if you forget Tab as the shortcut. There's a menu up here that says Edit Mode, or it says Object Mode, and Tab will bring you back and forth between those, but everything is right up here, so if you ever forget something, you should be able to find it between some of these menus here. But tab and edit mode obviously change the settings, so you might want to check sometimes. We're in edit mode now. So what we want to do is we want to just get this outline. We're going to come up here, and you got these nice three little shapes up here. Okay, and I'm going to click the second one in because it's going to let me select all any edge, just edges. The third one lets me select any face. The first one is any vertex point. I want the edge. So I'm going to select edge. You can also choose these by the number keys 1, 2, and 3. See how it shifts as I slam my key buttons? Number 2 for edges. So now we want to select all of the edge. Now, this is sort of a pain to have to hit each and every one, but there's a shortcut. Hold your Option, Alt key. Your Alt Option key. This is for Macs. Um, for PCs, maybe it's Control. I, I don't know. I'm on a Mac right now. So hold your Alt Option key, and bring your cursor, not on the shape, but just kind of like next to it, and just click. And we have a contiguous edge selected. Now, I didn't really get all of it. I'm not super sure why. So we're just going to continue the selection by holding Alt Option plus the Shift key. So Shift and Option, and then doing a similar selection just on the outside of the mesh. And now we're going to zoom, not zoom, scroll up, and do the same thing up here. Shift Option, click. Shift Option, click. And that's all we want to select, just this nice fine outer edge, because we're going to delete everything else. So I'm going to do Shift D. That's going to duplicate that selection. So now I have a duplicate of it. And this is the one that I'm going to use. Uh, but I want to keep it sort of in the same you know, stuff. So I'm going to, with Shift D, as I can move it around, I'm going to hit the X key. So it only lets me move it across the X axis. And now I'm going to select all of that by dragging. And I'm going to hit X and delete vertices. And that gets rid of all of it. If you have anything still s selected, Sometimes it might be hard to find a specific vertice, so just hit the A key, which will select everything. If you see any little orange bits in here, you know you got something to delete, so just drag it over again and do X and delete, and you're fine. So I'm going to hit the A key, make sure that's all selected. I'm going to do G, and I'm going to do X, and I'm just going to move it, not right on the point, but close to it. It's important you don't do it right on the point. Now, one thing to keep in mind before we go on to the next step is this little point right here. If I tab in and out, no, I don't. No, no. This little point right here is uh, the, the center point of the axis for the whole mesh. So if I grab it and move it way over here and get out of edit mode and I do rotate, see how it rotates way over there? Because that's where the program thinks its center is. Let me undo that and undo what I did, and undo that. 
Command Z, okay? Tab out of edit mode, so now if I were to rotate that, see how close it rotates to that center point? I just wanted to make sure that you understood that that is where the center is, that little orange dot that you can't select. Now we're gonna rotate this. This is where it gets real exciting. So we're gonna come over here to your blue wrenches. It's your modifier panel. We're gonna add a modifier. We're gonna add screw so that we can rotate our mesh. And as you can see, it's rotated a little bit, but it gives us a bit of a unreasonable shape. And if you're a little confused how I made that go away so quickly, I was in wireframe view, which is up here. These are your four views. You have wireframe, solid, look dev, which I never use. It's kind of like garbage. I don't like it. And you've got rendered. Okay, so we're in wireframe. To get in and out of wireframe, you hold shift and hit Z and that'll click you in and out of wireframe. So yeah, now we're here. We've got our modifier and it's applied the screw. We're gonna make sure we're clicking on our axis because we wanna change our axis from Z to Y. Wow, it's a bottle. We are getting very close. You know, it looks pretty good, but let's just increase our steps up to, let's just do it as 30, you know, not too crazy, but fairly reasonable. It's not going to destroy your PC, which is the most important thing. And I'm just going to make sure the render steps are also at 30. All right, smooth shading should auto be clicked. Just leave it on. Shift Z back into solid view. Now, I want to inspect this before I export it. There's a couple things I want to change. I need to change its material shader. So I gotta come over here to the materials panel, which is this little globe looking icon at the bottom, click on it. And there's a material that got imported, I suppose, with the Illustrator file, the SVG map. Come over here, hit the minus button, delete it. It's trash. So now you should have a nice white bottle. Let me move this over a little bit so you aren't getting blocked by my dumb face. So now we're going to hit new, and we're just going to scroll down to where it says transmission, and we're just going to scroll that all the way up, come up to roughness, and make sure that's all the way gone. In order to really get transparent or metallic objects to, you know, anything reflective to look good, you need a scene, and there's nothing in our scene. So there's two more steps we've got to do. We've got to add in a plane. Scale it up with the S key. Hit S key and just drag your mouse cursor. Now we got to come over here to our render properties, which is this nice camera icon. Go from render engine, and we're going to want to change our render engine because EV never handles glass well for me. I don't really know what the problem is. Well, it doesn't do glass for me. I always have to go to cycles. And if we go to cycles, C'est la vie, no? It's, it's glass. Uh, we're not getting the issue that we were getting before. You know? This is not too bad. So it's not perfect yet. Because right now it thinks it's just all glass. You know, like solid glass. It's not solid glass. Um, I mean... A bottle is not solid glass. You don't want that. So we need to add another modifier. We're going to come over here to our modifier, the little blue wrench icon. We're going to add modifier, solidify. It looks a little ugly, but hang on, because you want to come down to thickness and type 0 .001 and click enter. And that looks a lot better, but... You know, maybe not 0 0.001, let's do 0 0.002, and that's too thick, 0 0.0013. Okay, yeah, you know, I think um, that's pretty much good. Any graininess is because the viewport renderer is just always grainy. I just want to make my background look a little darker. Yeah, you know, I think that's pretty good. I think that's fair to say it's pretty good. So let's get this out of Blender and open it up in dimensions and see how we did. Come up here to file, go to export, and click wavefront OBJ. 
There's a few other file formats that work too, but I've found Wave for an OBJ to often be like just the most consistently workable and like just working whatever. So I'm saving my untitled OBJ. And now we're going to get rid of Blender and we're going to open up a new instance of Dimensions. We're going to go to Create New. Ah, there we go. We're going to hit Command I to import. We're going to go to our new OBJ, which is wherever you saved it. We're going to open it. And look at that. It imported every object in our scene, including the ones that we didn't necessarily want. It's really easy to just get rid of that object. You can either delete it from the Blender file completely, or you can just come over here, come over to Plane, and just click Delete. And it's gone. So let's select the bottle, hit the F key, so that we can fill up our, our screen space with it. Let's go to our Materials, pick Glass. It's not looking too bad. If you're always unhappy with the thickness of this, you can adjust the thickness in Blender, um, which, is, which is very easy to do. Let's see how it looks in the rendered. That's pretty close. I'm noticing one thing I forgot. Remember how I said when you're placing the, uh, the bottle, let's go to wireframe. Remember how I said when you're placing the bottle, I'm going to make my plane invisible. Grab, just, you see there's a little hole. And I was like, make sure it's not on the center because it could fuck something up. All right, this is the step I forgot. You want to close that hole. It's super simple. We're just going to apply all of our modifiers. We're not going to do the solidify, actually. We're actually just going to turn that off for now. We're going to come into our screw, and we are going to tab out of edit mode, and we are going to click apply. And when we tab back into edit mode, this is our whole mesh now. Like before, we click apply. You can still see the mesh, but this is the only thing that you can select, is that original like vector SVG line that we imported. So when we apply it, tab out of edit mode, hit apply, tab back into edit mode, now the whole mesh is permanent. Um, one thing that you could do is just duplicate this so that you can always go back because this is a destructive step and if you need to make any more changes to the line after this point you can't really do that so I would recommend saving this point and having a new file just so that you could step back to this point if you need to so yeah we've got it applied we're in our edit mode and so we want to select this ring no, we're in edit mode we want to select the inner ring so we're going to hold off option alt option and just select and it's going to select the whole contiguous line and it's going to select a ring. So we order to close it, we're going to click the M key, and we're going to click at center. So that's going to merge vertices at center. And now we're just going to come up to the top, rotate it around so we can get a better view here. There's the top. As you can see, it has a hole too. We're just going to click Alt Option, click the edge, select the whole edge, um, and then we're just going to click M to merge vertices and click at center to merge them at center. And that's the final step, you know? And also, if you're not happy with how dense your mesh is and you're like, it's too blocky because look at what you did. In the screw, you can always increase the steps. So again, important to save before you apply that modifier so that you can go back to it and go back to that step and increase its thing. But otherwise, you could probably just apply a subdivide surface and yeah that's honestly would do it so if you're not happy with how dense your mesh is and how smooth it is just apply a subdivide surface in your modifiers and let's export this I'm gonna delete the plane before I export it because I don't want to have to delete it again so now let, let's export this file export wavefront obj and we're gonna do this untitled to. So that took a little longer to save, but let's check it out. So we're going to get rid of that, minimize it, come over here to dimensions, select this guy, and just move him out of the way. Command I, and we're going to import our new one. Import's pretty good. Put on the glass. Something happened. Not sure what just happened. I know what happened. Pretty silly. There we go. That's going to turn on my solidifier in, so... Now when I export it this time, it's going to look correct. 
I'm just going to call this one last because it is the last export. If you find yourself thinking it's not thick enough or it's too thick in the glass with like the solidify modifier, just adjust the thickness. You can also make certain areas more thick. Um, there's a lot that you can do there, but this is just really basic. So let's grab this bad one and move it out of the way and import our proper one. So this is basically, it thinks the whole thing is glass. Uh, it's got a proper solidify modifier, but there's a hole all the way through it. And this last one is the golden ticket, last OBJ import. I don't know if you noticed, but that was a 58 megabyte file because I probably subdivided too much. Okay, put on that glass modifier and we're done. That's it. You did it. It's, we went through it together. There is the correct one. Yep. It's beautiful. That's the whole thing of how you do it. So these are the basic breakdowns. You create your shape in Illustrator, export it as an SVG, import the SVG into Blender, tab into edit mode while it's selected. Here, this is just going to be easier if I can just run through this all like this. Yeah, so you, you like, you know, you import your SVG. You want to make sure it's converted to a mesh. Tab into edit mode, make sure it's just the outer edge that's selected by holding Alt Option and just kind of selecting the outer edge. Shift D to duplicate that out. Delete what's rest, move it back, move it back on over. Tab out of edit mode, apply a screw modifier, move that screw modifier to the Y axis, save it. Yeah, at that point, save it. Then go to edit mode after applying the screw modifier, close the holes, apply a solidify modifier, and export as an OBJ for dimensions. And if it's not pretty enough in dimensions, it looks like it's all blocky or whatever, apply a subdivide surface modifier, and you're golden. Well, that's it, man. I really th hope that this made a lot of sense. I feel like this is a bit of a longer video. Um, but honestly, I feel like this sort of needs a bit of a longer video. Um, because if you're using dimensions, you're probably coming like I did from the roots of a graphic designer who just doesn't know anything about 3D. Like, I didn't know anything about 3D. I had to, like, like learn all this. And dimensions is, like, a great starter software to kind of break you into it because you don't really need to know how to render well because it just does everything really well. It's one of the great things about Dimensions, but it can be very picky sometimes. With what you experience, Dimensions is so picky with its shapes that even in the Adobe Suite, Illustrator and Photoshop do not properly export a 3D file for Dimensions. Like, what what is happening? I don't know. So just take my advice, man. Get Blender. Get Blender. Optimize your 3D workflow, okay? It's only gonna make it stronger. This goes for anybody else listening. Get Blender. It'll make you a powerful, powerful artist. That's about it. If you're still watching, I do have other videos on my YouTube channel. Uh, most of my Dimensions tutorials will also include Blender in the workflow. To sort of help my graphic designer friends break into 3D is very basic tutorials. A lot of the things, the steps I cover, um, there's some really cool stuff in there, though, that I think anybody who's interested in making cool stuff for Dimensions would be head over heels to learn. You know, again, one of the other issues with Dimensions is like, how do you make stuff for it? Adobe doesn't really do good at making 3D software, so you need a 3D software, okay? You need your own 3D software. You can use Photoshop, you can use Illustrator to create the shapes because maybe that's more comfortable. Yeah, so get Blender, do a little study on it. There's thousands and thousands of tutorials on YouTube that can help clear some of the gap and just some of the basic understandings. Because for Adobe Dimensions, you really don't need advanced knowledge with Blender. It's just very basic. Just know how to make a mesh and how to make a mesh not terrible. And you're going to have a great time in Adobe Dimensions. Because it does render really well. It's a, it's a good renderer. It's not my favorite, but it's really good. And also, yeah, if you're still watching, again, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for suffering with me this whole way through. Um, and I hope you learned something useful. And I hope that this is going to help, just help, you know? But I also have a Twitch that I started. Because I don't know if you've noticed my channel. Uh, it's been a little while since I uploaded a video. And the last videos I actually uploaded were games. 
So I guess I'm getting into games now. Yeah, a couple games, a couple more games, and then just like a bunch of tutorials. Um, yeah, so, you know, I stream usually in the mornings. Uh, feel free to stop in and say hello if you do have a Twitch. If not, you know, Twitch isn't for everybody. I understand. It's no big deal. Thank you for watching it on YouTube, though. It all helps me out. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. If you liked what you saw, slap a, slap a, like a sub subscribe or like the video. It helps me out. You know, if this helped you, uh, it's all, it's all help. That's the, that's the point. I hope this was clear. I hope this helped out. I hope you get Blender. But thank you for watching. I think this is where I'm going to cut the video.